Hello and welcome back to PE Academy. So this is uh, example 5, super mesh. So we looked at four examples so far. So if you are just coming across this, uh, the other four, five videos on that super mesh, please, do, uh, I'll leave the link in the description of this particular video. You can also check the links for videos on that, on that series like mesh, super mesh, nodal analysis, Thevenin and the likes. All right, so now let's look at this example five. We have this diagram here, this circuit, and it said that we should find the current in each mesh and the current in each element. So you're going to look, we have one, two, three, three mesh, and then we are going to look for the current that is in each of these elements, that means in these resistors, what are the current that are flowing through it. So if you have been following this video from the beginning on that super mesh, I want to believe this should be a, a bonus question for you. So what I want you to do for me is to just pause this video, attempt it, note down your answer, and then you look at the solution. So just to test your knowledge, so just pause the video and then try to attempt, it's a very simple one. That is if you have watched the I mean, the last four examples, I want to believe this should be a bonus question for you. Alright, so now let me just go ahead and solve it on my own. I want to believe you've also gotten your own answers. And then, um, and if you got your answer to be probably 3, 3, and then um, and minus 1, I want to, that means you are correct. Well, anyway, let's just go ahead and solve it. Alright, so now we have um, this now. Let's, let's solve. Alright, so the first thing that we have to do is, is to do what is to pick our direction. So let's pick our direction so like I do, clockwise for everything. So let's take this to be I1, I2, and then I3. So that means the current flowing in this particular mesh is I1, this is taken to be I2, and this is taken to be I3. So now once that is being done, so let's take our polarities. So the polarities for the voltage source is always constant. This is plus, this is minus. Y for this, this is plus, minus, that means in this direction, I'm going in this direction, this will be plus and then minus, no, you come across for plus first before the minus, so that is how you give it the polarities. For this, this will be plus, minus, plus, minus, and then for this, this will be plus and then this will be minus. Alright, so with that now, let's write out the equation for uh, of the current source. So let's let's do that here. So let me just draw it somewhere here. So we have this. This is where the super mesh comes into place, where we are having a current source between two meshes. So this is this one is coming downward, and we given to be four amperes. Is that clear? So the current two currents flowing through it, through it is I two and I three. So I two is coming downward, and then why I three is like this going upward. So this is I three, and this is I two. So with this now we can already get our we can get our uh, equation of our current source, which will be what. So if you have been following, what would that be? I two minus I three, and which is equal to what four amperes, and this is our equation one. So now we've gotten our uh, our first equation. So the next thing we have to do is to draw our super mesh circuit. So for us to draw our super mesh circuit, so in doing that we are going to be drawing this so that means we are going to be having something like this so we are going to be omitting this particular branch where we are having the current source so here we are having 10 a 10 ohm resistor here we are having 5 ohm resistor and here we are having 15 so we are having 15 uh, 15 ohm not 15 amperes so 15 ohm resistor so let's bring back the polarities that we are having here so on this part this 10 ohms this is it here we are having plus and minus due to a current flowing in upward direction which is i2 we also have on this side a current that is flowing downward which is i1 and then the polarity is what plus here and minus here this is it here and for this we are having plus and minus due to a current i2 the current is what is I2. So it's only I2 that is flowing through this. There is no other current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor. And for the 15 ohm, we have I3 flowing in this direction, downward. And the polarity there is plus and minus, downward like this. All right, so this is our, our super mesh circuit. So the next thing is let's apply um, catch up voltage law. So if you should apply KVL, apply KVL to super mesh. So what we are going to be having, so let me just start from, from this particular node, 
and then we go around all right so this is um, so from plus to minus due to i2 you are dealing with 10 ohm resistor so that's going to be um or let's just say from minus to plus so that will be from minus to plus now is due to i1 so that we're going to be having 10 i1 don't forget from minus to plus so we are sticking with the plus that's like plus 10 i1 so then the next one is from minus i mean from plus to minus so that will be minus so from plus to minus we are ending in minus so that's why it's minus plus so that will be minus 10 i2 then we get here that's from plus to minus that's minus 5 i2 then from plus to minus that's minus 15 and then the current here is i3 so let me indicate it i3 minus 15 i3 all right then there's nothing yet we get here that's equals to zero so with this now let's just um let's see let's just simplify it that's 10 i1 then minus 10 i2 and minus 5 i2 that's minus 15 i2 minus 15 i3 i hope you can still see this minus 15 i3 equals to zero this is our equation two so that's equation two right there okay so now let's apply kvl to this particular mesh one so apply kvl to mesh one so where we are having i1 so if you should apply kvl to mesh one we are going to be having this so let's start from this point here and then we go around the circuit so from here the first element we are coming across is the voltage source and it is from negative to positive so that's just two and it's already in volts it's already in volts so we can go ahead and write the value straight away so that's two now from plus to minus that'll be minus one and then the current there is i1 minus one i1 so you can also write minus i1 it's still the same thing so the next element we are coming across is this 10 uh 10 ohm resistor so from plus to minus due to current i1 so that'll be minus 10 i1 and also from minus to plus due to current i2 remember this 10 ohm resistor there are two currents flowing through it i1 and i2 so that would be plus 10 i2 so we'll continue and then we'll come back to where we started from there's no other thing there and then we'll see equals to zero so let's simplify this we're having minus 1 i1 and minus 10 i1 that is minus 11 11 i1 plus 10 i2 equals to minus 2 so this is our equation 3 so what we are going to do next is to solve equation 1 and equation 2 equation 3 simultaneously so let me write it out the way i used to write it out so i can just use my calculator to get the values so here this is equation 1 we have in i2 and i3 we don't have i1 so we can just pick it as 0 i1 plus 1 i2 minus 1 i3 equals to 4 and then equation 2 we have it to be 10 i1 minus 15 i2 minus 15 i3 equals to 0 why for i3 we are having to minus 11 i1 plus 10 i2 so we don't have i3 we can just give it either plus or minus is 0 i3 equals to minus 2 this is to give us a zero so the reason why i'm doing it like this is so that if you want to use your calculator you can easily you can easily do that so let me just let's just go through it again so so if you have your scientific calculator like the cashew 991 so once you press the mode button three times one two three you see equation you press one unknown we have there's option for two or three so if you look at this we are having three unknown i1 i2 and i3 there are three unknown values so you press three and then it brings you this. So it asks you A1. The value of A1 here is 0. So you press 0 on your calculator. You press 0 and equals 2. Then the next thing to ask you for B1. B1 is the next value, which is 1. So once you press 1, it will ask you for C, which is minus 1. So always look at the one with negative. You pick it, you input it in your calculator with the negative. So that is minus 1. So minus 1. You press your equals 2. To ask you for D1, our D1 is 4. Press your 4, your equals to sign. And then you go to the next line, which is A2. A2 here is 10. So once you press 10, 
you're equals to sine. It asks you for B2. B2 is minus 15. If you check it here, minus 15. So you press minus 15 on your calculator and you're equals to sine. So you continue in that manner. So for C2, it's also minus 15. Then it's asking for D2. D2 is a 0. I press a 0 equals 2. Now it's asking for A3. That's coming to the third line. So which is minus 11. So I press in minus 11. Minus 11. It's asking for B3 now. B3, which is this. 10. It's asking for C3, which is a 0. I put in a 0. And my equals 2. It's asking for D3, which is minus 2. So I put in minus 2 equals 2. Sign. So that is how you use your calculator. So these are the values that I've just written out. So once you press it in your calculator, you solve it manually. So you're going to get your I1 to be 2.869 amperes, your I2 to be 2.956 amperes, and your I3 to be minus 1.043 amperes. So now we've been able to answer the first part of the question, which is find the current in each of the mesh. So we've gotten the current in each of the mesh, which is I1, I2, and I3. And by the way, if I'm speaking too fast, you can always um, slow down the speed of your video. That's if you're watching it on YouTube. All right, so we've gotten I1, I2, and I3. Now, for us to get the current in each of the elements, which is the next thing we are going to be doing. So I'm going to be using this space to explain that for us. Now, but before I explain that, if you look at what we are having for I3, we're having I3 to be negative. So that is to say that at this point in time, the direction we assumed here as a clockwise direction is actually anti-clockwise. So, but that doesn't affect our answer. It will just make, give us a positive value but we indicate the direction. All right, so let's let's do that. Let's look at the elements we are having here. We are having one, two, three, four. So for those elements that we are having here, let's um, let's find the current path flowing through them. So let's start with the current flowing through. Um, so when I have something like this, I I miss current. So if I have it as a subscript, that is one ohm. So that means the current flowing through the one ohm resistor. So if you look at this circuit, this, this is the one ohm resistor here. The current that is flowing through it is I1. If you look at there's only one current flow, which is I1. So the current flowing through the one ohm resistor is I1. And if you look at this, I1 is given to, we've gotten our I1 to be what? 2.869 amperes. So that is it, the current flowing it. And the direction that we assumed is that, you know, when you are dealing with mesh, you always pick, assume your direction. In most of my solutions, I pick clockwise direction. So that means the direction that we assume, which is a clockwise direction at this point, is flowing like this, you know, here, like this. That means to the right. That means the, the direction that we assume is actually correct. That means that is the actual direction that the current is flowing because we're having a positive. So as we are having a negative value, that means um, it is in opposite direction. I hope that makes sense. So that is it for this one ohm. So let's go to the 10 ohm resistor. So current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor. Now in this 10 ohm resistor, there are two currents that are flowing through it. We have the current I1 and I2 because you can see it is between the two meshes here where we are having I1 and I2. So for us to get the exact value of the current that is flowing through it, we examine it. Okay, we have I1, we have I2. Let's go back to, the, to our answers. We have I1 and we have I2. So we look at it, which of them is higher between I1 and I2. So whichever one is higher will be so we will come for subtracted by the one that is lower. So I2 is higher than I1. So with that, we are going to be having I2 minus I1. Because if you look at it, I2 is 2.9. I1 is 2.8. So that will be 2.956 amperes minus 2.869 amperes. And what would that give us? So let me just type that in my calculator and see. So 2.956. And by the way, if you type, try to use your calculator to solve that um, uh, simultaneous equation, and when you want to clear it, just press your shift, shift mode, and then 3. Press your 3, and then you press equals to 2 times to clear everything. All right, so that's 2.956 minus 2.869. So that will give us... Um, 0 0.087 amperes so that means the current uh, flowing through it is um, 0 0.087 amperes so for you to determine the direction you, the direction will be with the uh, 
the direction of whichever current are that have the highest value i2 have a higher value so the direction of i2 on the 10 ohm resistor is what is upward because like this so this is how it will look like so when it is flowing and when it gets to i2 it is flowing upward i hope that makes sense all right so that is it for the 10 ohm so let's look at the current that is flowing through the 5 ohm resistor so the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor is just i2 alone so if you look at it i2 alone so let's say the value of i2 is what 2.956 so that will be current through the 5 ohm resistor is i2 which is what 2.956 amperes okay so now let's look at the next element we are having is um the 15 ohm resistor so for the 15 ohm so that means current flowing through the 15 ohm resistor so if you look at that circuit what is it the current flowing through it is what is i3 so it's i3 and this time around our i3 is negative so we cannot just go ahead and write minus 1.043 amperes it's not that you are wrong but i just let's just do the right thing so we are going to give it to, to be without the negative so that's 1.043 amperes now for you to just prove that if you have solved something like this and you get a negative answer and when you are indicating the that a particular when you've gotten a negative answer for a current and then you are indicating that it's also passing through an element and you take out the negative sign you have to indicate something which is the direction like we are doing here okay for this one i didn't indicate the direction for the 5 ohm resistor okay so if you look at it at this point it is flowing in this direction so this is what it will be so like i explained maybe in this video in the last video you know one current can flow in different direction exactly like this i2 on the 10 ohm is flowing upward on the 5 ohm is flowing to the right i hope that is clear all right so let's come back to this on this 15 ohm resistor so is i3 which is in a negative minus 1.043 but we don't want to have it a negative value here and i said the reason why it's having a negative is because the direction that we assumed here which is a clockwise direction that means here we assume that the current is flowing downward and that was why we got the negative answer so now that we've gotten the negative answer it's telling us that this current is not flowing downward it's actually flowing what upward exactly so what we are going to do now is when we are now writing our answer for the current that is flowing through the particular elements we are going to have something like this so instead of downward we switch it upward so that we can have a positive value i hope that is clear if it is clear do let me know in the comment section below all right so that is it for this video i hope you find value under the video super mesh so this is what i want to cover so far on that super mesh and um, in the next one i'll be looking at nodal analysis and i want to believe by the time you'll be watching this video i should be done with that i'll leave the links to everything in the description of this video so if you have any questions um, under this or these previous videos i've done uh, do leave them in the comment section below um, do make sure you subscribe Give the video a thumbs up share it with your colleagues and uh, do check out our website also pe academy a lot of great content there so peacademy.co see you at peacademy.co so with that i'll see you all in the next video thank you very much for watching